What were you able to, to take away maybe from a good standpoint last spring that'll, that'll help you going into this fall? Yeah, good morning, Rob. Uh, it's great to be on here today, and we're anxious to get back on the field and, and play the game we love. Uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, when, you, when you look back at, at the spring season, okay, um, you know, I, I look at our football team and the opportunity we had for growth. You know, we played a lot of young guys in that season. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm confident in, in, in the growth that we've made this summer and, and how hard our guys have worked, you know, over the summer and, and trained. Um, and, you know, we've, you know, when you, when you look at, at where we're at as a program, um, and what we've done really the last three years, we've been a, a team that's been competing in the CAA and, and finishing uh, over 500 uh, the last three years prior to this spring season. So, uh, so I'm confident with where we're at and, and our ability to compete and, uh, and push our program forward this fall. Start with uh, questions from Matt Krause. Go ahead, Matt. Rob, thanks so much. Coach, this is a question for you. Over the last couple of years, running the ball and the rushing offense has been kind of an inconsistent point on the offensive side. How much do you credit that, especially in the spring, with improvements that your team needs to make versus the fact that Davis was unavailable and there were some question marks at quarterback? Sure. So when you look at us up front, you know, um, I expect to see significant growth from our group uh, up front. We played some some young guys. We played three freshmen on the offensive line in the spring, uh, you know, and and we you know had some growing pains from the graduation of of three four year starters that year before. Uh, when you take Davis Cheek out of the mix and his ability to distribute the ball around the perimeter in a in an RPO offense like like we are, um, it makes it easier for people to load the box. So, you know, I think I'm. I'm I'm pleased with the growth that we've made up front and the effort our guys have put in in the offseason and, and the development uh, of, a, of some young players uh, around a couple of veterans with Mike Purcell and, and Nick Saramelli up front. Excellent. Thank you. Davis, this next question is for you. Uh, obviously, this is the second time, unfortunately, that you're coming back from missing game action due to injury. What did you learn the first time around in 2018 that's going to help you as you come back this time? Uh, well, I think with any injury, um, you kind of learn more about yourself. And I think the first time around, I learned just um, a lot about determination and grit and uh, just getting back in that process. And then honestly, with this time around, um, you know, it, it hasn't been easy. This has been a very uh, different injury than I've been a part of. Um, the ACL was, I think, more strength involved. And this was kind of a freak thing. Um, but uh, more than anything, I'm I'm really grateful for the people around me, um, all the teammates, uh, training staff, parents, uh, coaches, all that, all those kind of things, because um, there's been good days, but there's been bad days and uh, people around me have really made the bad days a lot easier. So um, just I learned a lot about grit, determination, and then also just people around me. Excellent. Thank you. Torrance, next question yeah. is for you. Um, felt like in the spring that you guys were somewhat up and down defensively, you know, frequently you're able to get off the field in a three and out situation, hold in the red zone, but then other times you guys were burned by big explosive long plays. What's the key to avoiding big explosive plays on the defensive side of the ball? Um, we just have to continue to trust each other and trust in the hard work that we all put in each day. Um, those are really just two things that we have to do and continue to do, and that's what we plan to do in the fall. Excellent. Thanks, Rob. All right. Next question is to Adam Smith. Good morning, Adam. Hey, Rob. Tony, good to see you. Davis, good to see you. Torrance. Good morning, Adam. Uh, you're looking great, Tony. Um, when, Tony, we, I'm, I'm looking at your depth chart here. Davis at quarterback, Jalen Thomas running back, the guys at receiver, Cortez, Donovan Williams at tight end. I mean, when you look at sort of your – stable of playmakers i mean these these look like all conference level type players and have some of them have been how do you feel about just that area of your offense and these guys that you know you're gonna have trying to make plays for you yeah i feel great about that group you know it's a it's a veteran group and and then you add in some of some some youthful um athleticism that that we've added the last couple of years and you know i feel good about the group got to keep them healthy and 
and uh, go out there and, and execute and finish football games. You mentioned it a little bit in your opening. When, when you lose Davis before the spring season even starts and then Joey goes down, you know, a game and a half in, you're trying to win games and you're trying to prepare for the next opponent. But, you know, how much of an inclination is there just on your end to try to – I mean, do you almost – take sort of a de developmental look at things when you have those losses, those injuries, and what you're trying to go through with playing in the pandemic. Was, th was there a, a thought there that let's see what, you know, these younger guys look like de developmentally? Yeah, I'll tell you, Adam, the, you know, the juggling of the personnel and the depth during the, the spring COVID season, it, it wasn't good for us. It was hard. And, um, you know, we need to give our guys a chance to, to settle into their primary positions and, and kind of master their craft. And, and we've got talented players. We need to get, you know, get better at what we do and, and more consistent uh, with that group. So gain some valuable experience. What we didn't get is the, you know, the spring season, spring ball, that developmental time between the spring football season and this fall season. Uh, but our guys have put a lot of work in in the summer. And, um, you know, once we get the pads on here on August 6th, you know, we'll be cranking it up to develop those skills and, and fundamentals and, and uh, tighten up our scheme. Davis, you're talking about the injury and it being a freak thing. Was there a thought for you just personally? Like, Davis, was there a thought personally to maybe – not playing college football anymore when it happened just what were what was your reaction to it and I'm sure disappointment to it and and just thoughts about your career at that point yeah I mean whenever you have an injury there's always disappointment involved or anything like that but the thought never crossed my mind to hang it up or anything like that that's uh, I, I want to play football I want to play football for a long time and I know that this is just another bump in the road and you know, it just adds to the it adds to your own personal story um, more than anything. But yeah, no, ne never, never doubting anything like that. And honestly, I have I have an obligation to the, my teammates that never, never in my life would I consider letting them down by doing something like this in my mind, selfish by like hanging it up or anything like that. So um, no, never, never crossed my mind, and uh, I don't, I don't think it ever will. Did you? I, I'll get one more in if Rob will let me. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Um... Did you go into coaching mode during the spring? Like, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? I'm sure you were booted up. Like, what? How did you? How did you handle it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my role just changes from uh, impact on the field to trying to help out younger guys in when whatever way I could. Um, a lot of that for me looks like trying to coach them uh, when I can. Uh, the problem was I was on a scooter for most of the spring season. I think pretty much all the spring season, actually, I was in a soft cast for a couple of weeks and then a hard cast for uh, four to six weeks after that. So I, I couldn't really get around the field, um, but I was around the building as much as possible, just trying to talk to guys, trying to, uh, you know, just see where everybody's at, see how they're doing, just checking on players and just coaching up as much as I could. So um, it's all it's a tough thing, but, you know, that's just how my role changes on the team. Next question to uh, Kyle Kenzin. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, for for Davis, you know, you kind of alluded to it, mentioning the the people around you. How did your teammates and and the coaching staff and that sort of thing, you know, boost you up and and the team as a whole? You know, you guys go from not having a fall season last year, and then with you personally missing the the, the spring due to the injury. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing that we have right now that's um, that's really the amazing thing is that we have really good people on the team uh, and they just happen to be really good football players too. So it helps out along with the process of recovery and all those kind of things whenever you have really good people around you. Um, and I mean, I, I could go down a list from Donovan Williams, Jackson Parham, uh, Michael Purcell, Nick Saramelli, Jalen Thomas. I can just keep going for days, um, honestly. And all those guys just with the way they are naturally, uh, they really help boost you and they, they give you something to, to come play for. Um, and that's why I said that that thought never crossed my mind of doing something like hanging it up or anything like that, because, you know, those guys are out there in the spring giving it their all. And um, my job is at that point to get back as quick as I can and uh, to come, come help them win. Next question for Cole Noble. Go ahead, Cole. 
Hey, Coach. Um, I just got a quick question for you. When the schedule came out, uh, the first one that I circled on Elon's schedule this year was the Week 3 game, uh, September 18th, I believe, against App State. Um, it's probably one of the toughest environments to play in, especially with fans coming back pretty much in the entire state, North Carolina. So how are you preparing for that tough environment you're going to be going into in September? Yeah, Cole, I'll tell you this. Our, our non-conference schedule is great because it's got some, some regional schools that we've played in the past, going back to our Southern Conference days with Wofford and, and App State, and then you had another in-state school uh, in Campbell. Um, specifically that App State game, it's a great game for us. You know, about half our roster is from the state of North Carolina. So our kids and their families, they know App State. And, um, you know, we've got a history of playing them and uh, they're a great football team. You know, our kids, we've got some guys who, you know, maybe they were recruited by App State, but maybe didn't get an offer from them. And so, you know, we'll have our chip, a chip on our shoulder when we go up there and um, we'll just feed from, from that, that environment that they've got up there. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun football game for us. And uh, one more question that um, announced back in May, you added two new coaches to your coaching staff, um, Coach Banks and Coach Edwards. How have they been this summer in terms of being an addition to your coaching staff and how have uh, they done just as the uh, summers progressed? Yeah, they've been great. They're, they're two guys with North Carolina roots and Arquita was an outstanding player here uh, at Elon and uh, Devontae Edwards was, a, was an outstanding player at NC State and played five years in the league. So uh, they've been great. And, you know, the amount of time they've been able to spend with our players has been limited just due to summer access. Um, but they've, they've come right in and, and made an impact uh, you know, on our staff from a recruiting standpoint and player development standpoint. Awesome. Thank you. Adam, you got a follow-up for these guys? Sir? I do. Thank you. Um, Davis, uh, as, as an older guy, we're, we're all getting older, but um, your thoughts on being picked 12th out of 12 teams in the league in the preseason poll and no need to hold back. It's just us here talking. <laughs> yeah you know I think I think the uh, coach from Albany said something about it just you, you can't pay attention to preseason rankings and I mean anything with preseason at the end of the day it doesn't matter um, it's not going to affect how we train prepare do anything this summer and at the end of the day uh, we're going to go play first game with everything we got so it it, it doesn't matter one bit um Obviously, you'd like to be a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, we earned that record in the spring. I mean, that's that's the unfortunate part, but it's not going to change anything how we prepare. So we're still going to come out, and I think that we're a really good football team, and we just got a lot to prove. Tony, real quick, uh, what, what positions are you looking forward to seeing during camp? The Maybe some of the battles for playing time. Like, what, what are you interested in, you know, in particular, maybe some of the spots? Well, you know, up front on the offensive line, we talked about that a little bit earlier, just with the amount of young guys that we played there. Um, so I'm anxious to see their development physically from the last four months and see where they're at uh, so we can get our best five on the field there. But the linebacker position is, is, is another group where we went through some <laughs> uh, with a combination of some youth and some injuries. Uh, but both groups, you know, gained some valuable experience in the spring and have made significant gains in the weight room. So uh, those are two groups we've got our eyes on, uh, as well as some some young DBs that got on the field for us. Uh, and then on the offensive side, you know, that that tight end group um, with Donovan Williams, he's a, he's a veteran and he's a talented, you know, all league type of player for us. Uh, but we've got some youngsters that got to grow up quick. The areas we're strong, you know, you look at our D line, and that's a veteran group with Torrance Williams and Tristan Cox and Marvin Pearson played a lot of snaps. I expect those guys to be disruptive, and and I expect the same type of production from our receivers and, and running backs uh, around Davis on the offense. Tony Davis Torrance, thanks so much for taking time with us this morning. Hope camp goes well here for you in the uh, starting next week, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the field. Thanks, thanks. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you.